Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make an inclined side fan fold. Do you remember when these were the gravity dies? Start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can, and then decide which side do you want your pattern to start on. For me, I typically gravitate towards the left side of the shirt, and I think it's just because I'm left-handed, and that's the side that's closest to me. Now, to draw on my arc, I'm using a washable marker, and this time I had to use sinew because I couldn't find my kite string to save my life. So all I did was just wrap the sinew around the washable marker, held the sinew down flat on the table, and then just drew on the arc. Really easy. Next, I'm going to pleat along this line, making that line as straight as possible. So if you watch me, I'll twist the shirt in front of me that keeps that line going straight. Sometimes I'll go on autopilot and not pay attention to what I'm doing and find myself like going around in a curve and then the line isn't very straight. And that will show up in your final product. So try to pay attention to what you're doing. It's easy to get sidetracked, I know. Now I think these pleats are about a half inch tall. And you do want to start with smaller pleats in the beginning because as you work your way down the project, the pleats become taller and taller, as you'll see. Now I'm going to secure the project by using rubber bands. I just find them to be quick and easy, but if you want to use kite string, you could. You could even use sinew if you wanted to, but that would create white lines and I'm not going for that look. So these are the tiny baby hair rubber bands. And I do have a link for them down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. Now that we have the front part of the shirt all pleated up and secure with the rubber bands, it's time to work on the back half of the shirt. So you want to continue creating your pleats. And remember me saying that the pleats are going to get taller as we go on? I'm not sure if you can tell, but they're now closer to an inch tall, which also means I'm going to have to increase my rubber band size. I don't want my rubber bands to completely squish the project and cause it to want to buckle up. Also, you have two options you can do here. You can decrease the height of the pleats by splitting them in two. And what that does is it creates sort of a feather look right there where you split them. Or you can continue on trying to make them one single pleat. And that's what I'm going to do for this project. I want it to have a very clean, straight line from the beginning to the end. That rubber band that I just placed on the project is my second favorite rubber band, and it's just a little bit too big for this project. So I'm breaking down and going into my hodgepodge um, bag of tricks, so to speak. It's my little jar of rubber bands. All my miscellaneous sizes are in there. Again, I want the project to be bound together securely, but I don't want it to be too tight and I definitely don't want it to be too loose. When working with ice dyes, they are very forgiving. If you're going to do liquid dyeing, you might have to spend more time being really accurate with your securing. But ice dyes, like I said, they're forgiving. Plus you want the dye to be able to flow down the channels of the pleats so it doesn't need to be overly tight, but you just want it to be held together. It's been a while since I've made one of these and I'm out of practice. Pleating is not my favorite part of tie dyeing. Most of you know that I love to play in the colors. So it's taking me a little bit longer to get through it than some other projects. 
And when I pull it out of the dryer, I always look at it and go, wow, this looks so great. I should make more of these. But now that I'm editing it, I remember why I don't make them all the time. It's not that they're difficult to make. They're actually really easy to make. They're just more time consuming. I like to get right into it and get to playing with the dye and having fun. Pleating, not so much. Yay, we finally made it through all that. So now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the die. So let's talk about the die setup here for a minute. So I have the shirt placed down inside of a piece of gutter and I got the gutter at Lowe's and it was, I think nine feet, maybe 10 feet. I always tell myself when I go into Lowe's, I'm going to look so I know what to say. So it's either nine or 10 feet long. So you're gonna need a truck or you're gonna have to hang it out your window or something, I don't know and a saw. So I took one piece of gutter and I cut it down into three pieces. And then I took another one and I cut it down into smaller pieces, like four pieces. And then I took a couple of them and cut them just in half so that they're nice and long for these long projects. Cause this is a really long project. I took a paper clip and I unfolded it and I have it hooked into one of the rubber bands and I have it bent over the top of the gutter. That way the project isn't going to slide down the gutter and go into the muck. It can drip down and not soak up all the muck water. If it did touch the muck water, that would be fine. It just would be darker down at that end. And now I'm placing my die, I don't know, maybe that's every like two, two and a half inches. I did mark out my pattern, but you guys know I rarely follow you know, what I mark out. I just kind of get going on it and uh, change my mind. I'm using plastic picnic spoons that I picked up at Walmart. This is the same box that I have had the entire time I've been tie dyeing. I've broken one spoon that I can remember. It just snapped in half. Now you notice how I'm using the spoon to sort of like poke at the project. What I'm doing is I'm using it to get in between the pleats, just letting a little bit of dye creep down in there just to make sure that I get good saturation. The blue dyes have a tendency to be one of those sticky, clumpy type powders and they don't really like to sprinkle on very well. So the blues take me a little bit longer to add to the project, but I do end up getting through it. And also I think that, you know, poking it down in there with the blues helps with the saturation. Blues are creepers. I mean, they're going to saturate well on their own, but since it's not a fine powder, I just feel like it can't get into all the nooks and crannies like some of the other colors can. A couple other things I should also mention. I have found that when doing these projects, it's easier to add your die while it's still laying flat. This is going to be an incline. So I used to do it with it already set up, inclined, ready to go, but then I found like the die would just roll downhill and I had colors where I didn't want them to be. Another thing, I'm also staggering the colors a little bit. So when I add the next color, just a little bit, maybe a, a centimeter or so, I overlap the colors because I want them to sort of blend together versus creating a harsh line. We'll see if it works. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. I'm going to be adding quite a bit of ice to this project, so I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11, so the Procyon dye can have a chance to react with the cotton fibers. Now, I've learned this tip from watching Goyo. You've heard me say that before. I took some of my foil that I've used. It, you know, I like to reuse things and I'm just creating an ice barrier. That way I don't have to fill up the entire length of the gutter with ice. I can just fill it to the foil and then all of that muck can run down into the tote. It's genius. Now I'm going to add the ice and I'm just going to fill the gutter up and I'm using my nugget ice. I do have the Frigidaire Nugget Ice Maker. If you don't have Nugget Ice, that's fine. 
You could use bagged ice, you could use your freezer ice, you could use ice tray ice. Ice is ice, whatever you have, use it. I stopped adding the ice right at the tip because I don't wanna knock the die loose and get it on my table and make a mess. So now I'm going to create the incline. So I gently pick up the whole gutter and I place one end of it down at the bottom of the tote and the other end is hanging up over the top and I finish adding my ice. That way the die is going to roll down the project instead of all over my table. And then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. I let the project batch for the full 48 hours. Many of you know that I do that. I like to have maximum vibrancy and I also want the dye to have a chance to really bond with the fibers instead of just going down the drain. So now it's time for the rinse out and you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Cold water gets the soda ash out, hot water rinses away unbonded dye so it doesn't redeposit onto the soda ash that you didn't rinse out. I hope that makes sense. Cold water, then hot water. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. Then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And with everything else, the links are down below in the description box. It just makes it easy for you to find. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our incline side fan fold after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out so pretty. I really like this shirt a lot. I think the colors really complement each other very well. So the golden yellow is just glowing bright. I, I like the way that looks. Now the coral pink is very orange looking, but I'm not mad at it. I think it looks really pretty. And it could look more orange because the yellow is mixing with the fuchsia red, creating more of an orange look but I'm fine with it, it's pretty. Now I don't normally ice dye with fuchsia red, it's just not one of my favorite colors personally, but I think it works really well in this application. And it meets with the turquoise and makes a really pretty purple color. And then the cerulean blue is just glowing. Now the blue violet has broken down into that really pretty magenta color and I think it looks great. I'm excited to get to the single color ice dye for that one because I think we're gonna see some awesome splits on that. And then the power berry all the way up there at the sleeve, it's taking the brunt of all the work. So think about it, all those colors are flowing down into the sleeve. So having a nice dark color down at the bottom can sort of disguise any weird color blends that might look brown. So power berry is a real winner in this one. Overall, I'm very pleased with the outcome of this shirt. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!